Hey guys, welcome back to the Laux Family Farm. I'm Amber and today I'll be taking you on a summer farm tour and garden tour. <laughs> so technically here in Northwest Indiana where our farm is located, it is still summer, but that's gonna change in just a handful of days. It actually, the first day of fall will be coming up here shortly. So I thought we needed to hurry up and get uh, the garden and the farm documented for the summertime. All right, so I thought we would start this tour where I ended the spring garden tour uh, last time. And that is in my sunflower pumpkin patch garden area. Uh, we really don't have a name. We typically just call it the pumpkin patch. We use this area to grow pumpkins, sunflowers, and some zinnias. We did just recently add a farm stand to our little homestead. And I've been selling some cut flowers and we just wanted to grow pumpkins here for the kids and decoration. So it's actually already, all the sunflowers have bloomed and have been harvested and our pumpkins are about ready to finish up. We have some white powdery mildew and so most of the plants are starting to go ahead and be ready for us to harvest the pumpkins from. There is also a small section of sweet potatoes. This is the first year I tried growing sweet potatoes and I think we're still, a couple weeks away from harvesting and I'm not sure if that's going to be affected by the frost. We should have about three to four more weeks before our first expected frost date. We are zone uh, 6a. So here you can see the white powdery mildew. We did try to tree and remove some of the leaves earlier in the season but now that they're all turning orange we just went ahead and just let the mildew take over. So we have some gourds here some regular pumpkins. This is actually a really nice big one we've got going on and it's just starting to turn orange. We also have sweet little baby chicks that like to spend their days here. It's really fun to see. They fit back here is where we keep our chickens and the little babies still fit through the fence. So they come here to our little patch. But as you can see, our zinnias are doing wonderful still. Um, behind them is where I had planted the sunflowers. There's still just a handful that are still blooming, but overall this area is pretty much done. We do have a couple fun little pumpkins that have all the bumps and our kids call them the warty pumpkins. Look at that. All right, so this is the front side of our property on the south side. If you make your way over to this area, it is a section of our property that we don't utilize. All right, so this section of our property that is right next to the sunflowers and pumpkins, kind of, it's pretty wooded. We have a lot of poison ivy and just so much brush that when we put in our fencing that we have for the chickens. Uh, we just stopped right, right where the foliage got so thick it was hard to dig fence posts. But now that we have the tractor, our plan is to go ahead and start expanding this fence line. This fence post here to the edge of our property, we have about 20 feet. However, the property line as it goes back does go at an angle. So there's a decent amount of space that we're not using. So speaking about this unused piece of our property um, leads me to some really fun news that I wanted to share with you guys. In two weeks we are actually welcoming our first goats onto our property. They are two male weathered goats uh, that we are actually going to use to help us clear this brush and keep our property uh, a lot more manageable. Like I said we have a ton of poison ivy and a lot of other things that goats are just really good and really capable at clearing. So our thought process behind getting these two weathered goats is that it's going to allow us to get comfortable um, just caring for goats and being more aware of what goats need to thrive and survive. Uh, in the future, my dream is to eventually have dairy goats on our property. That is something that I've always really envisioned for myself. Um, and our little homestead. So having these two male goats that are just simply here to take care of our brush and be friends and pets for our kids 
is really a nice step forward. Uh, we take it really seriously when we take animals onto our property. We wanna make sure that they have a good life, uh, that we know how to care for them and care for them well. So this is our first step. And then maybe in a couple years when I feel ready, we will welcome some dairy goats. But for now, we are just so looking forward to welcoming these two goats onto our property. And if you want to follow along on that journey, we will be making videos about it. So go ahead and give us a subscribe so that you can watch us bring these goats on. We're bringing them home in two weeks. So you can be expecting some fun videos to come. Now, as we walk over to the garden, um, I did want to draw attention to the fact that there are some rainstorms coming. So as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, it is one of the last days of the summer. So there is a chance I might not finish this tour fully. And I would just suggest you to go ahead and view some of our other, um, our spring or winter farm tours. If you really wanna see the layout of our property, this video is just really gonna be highlighting all the changes that we've had over the, uh, the span from spring to summer. All right, so we are at the garden now. All right, so this is my large summer vegetable garden and cut flowers. And it is a wild kind of mess. We've actually already started pulling out some of the crops and plants, getting prepared for the fall and winter months. Now we're not doing any type of fall gardening or planting out here in this section because this garden just needs a lot of work. We spent all of our energy and resources on just building this. It's brand new. We finished it at the end of spring. And overall, our harvest was pretty good considering just that this is a very clay-based ground and it retains a lot of water and we weren't able to bring in a lot of fresh compost. So I'm overall really pleased with it, but we do have a lot of work to get it prepared for next summer. All right, so I do have quite a few of my cut flowers, like my Cosmos and a lot of my giant marigolds that are still doing so well and they're looking beautiful. But a lot of my pepper plants and tomatoes that we're growing, they are really just starting to peter out. The ducks are here to say hello. So we have our peppers and tomatoes and what we did is we treated this space as if we were container gardening. First, because this is clay based and we didn't have money to bring in compost and make big beds, we just dug into the clay, added the small amount of compost and soil that we had and just grew uh, the plants in that way. And we've had a, a big harvest. We've been able to get a lot of food, but our plants, you can see, we dealt with a lot of yellowing and just a lot of small sized plants. So what we are going to be doing in the next two weeks is start ripping everything up and then starting to add all of our chicken bedding, duck bedding. Now that we're getting goats, we'll start adding their manure. We'll bring in some compost and we're really gonna build these beds up. Right now our mulched um, walkways are actually higher than the beds, but by next spring when we're ready to plant, I'm hoping to have some good like thick beds we will do a till. Alex got a tractor, so we'll do a first initial till, and then we're hoping to do no-till gardening here in this space, but we will just see. It's definitely just learning. All right, one of the favorite things though about this garden space was my center stock tank, and we had ornamental corn growing. We just harvested some, and I was able to do some cute decorations with the kids, and that's been really fun. I have so many beautiful Cosmo varieties. What suffered the most was my dahlias that I started from seed. They just did not appreciate this so the clay soil, but I, as you can tell, did get a few dainty little blooms. I'll try to dig up the tubers and see what we have, but I'm not expecting much. Here's some zinnias. Again, you can just see the yellowing from not having enough nutrition. 
not being able to set their roots deep. Before we leave this garden, there is something I do want to show you. One of the things I'm most proud about. A good friend of mine gave me some variegated jalapeno plants. I don't even know if you can see. It's absolutely gorgeous. The leaves have some variegation too, but the pepper, are you kidding me? Look at that. He also did gave me some variegated jalapeno plants also. And this plant is beautiful. I need to come out and do some harvesting. So even though these plants were small, they still produced, I mean, shockingly, a really good amount of food. Oh, here's another variegated jalapeno. Isn't that so pretty? The little purple flowers before the peppers. All right, so next up, I'm going to go ahead and walk over to our farm stand because that is new. Right, I'm gonna link a video here that talks all about our new farm stand and really just highlights it. Uh, we have it here on the front part of our property, right on the road. I sell daily our farm fresh eggs and sourdough bread, but we have been able to put some peppers and like I said, some cut flower arrangement. The growing season is ending. I really don't have much uh, cut flowers to put out any longer. But I do have some plans of maybe doing some Christmas wreaths and other just uh, seasonal things and items. So this has been just a really fun uh, addition to our property and has just really allowed me to be creative and actually get to know our community a lot better. I've been able to meet a lot of people from this. We've even had quite a few of our neighbors bring over tomatoes if they have an excess amount and we were able just to give away free tomatoes and things like that have just been really cool uh, as just a way to get to know our community better. So we have really enjoyed having this here on our property. <laughs> Oh All right, so here at the pond, which is just on the other side of our garden, there really hasn't been much of a change. Alex did go out and get a few new, um, a small shipment. <coughs> what, what do you call it? All right, so not much has changed here at our pond, except that Alex did just last weekend go get four pounds of some fathead minnows and added them to the pond. Earlier this spring, again, I'll link it right here, we did get a much larger shipment of fish and stocked our pond for the year. But here now that it's fall, we just needed to add some more minnows. We also got just um, 75 hybrid bluegill that we added in. So hopefully this spring, all we'll have to do is add some more fathead minnows. And that's about it. Our ducks are doing great. We probably have too many males. You have four males and seven females. Yeah, so the girls are getting um, quite a bit of attention and I don't think they like having that many. So we might go ahead and thin the flock a little bit before the winter starts. But overall, they're, they're doing great. We are making our way to the back part of our property. This is roughly an acre or so that's fenced in. And we let our chickens free range here. Sorry, I caught Alex. <laughs> he doesn't like being on camera unless he absolutely has to. Um, so let's see. Big changes here is that we were growing sweet corn and we have gone ahead and harvested all of the corn. We tried to do a second um, planting and kind of succession so the sweet corn and it just did not do well. I wasn't around when it had just started germinating to really water the corn and so it's just stunted and it needed way more water. So we just actually just today took the fence down and we're just gonna let the chickens eat those. There's a couple of little uh, baby ears of corn but we don't have enough time for it really to mature. Yeah. Probably be All right, yeah, sunk. so this, I mean, granted, it should have probably had another I mean, three weeks, but 
There's something there. Yeah. Anyway, so we just, <laughs> it's a little mini corn. We just figured these ladies would probably enjoy it a lot more. All right, so then chickens, everything's the same. We have two coops for them. We've added a couple little babies here and there as we've had a broody hen. That's been a really fun experiment uh, this season, just seeing uh, broody hens become moms and just switching out their eggs for baby chicks instead of letting them actually just hatch their own eggs. Um, but the only other thing to really report about the chickens is that this spring we did do a large order of new chicken breeds. Specifically, we wanted to start having copper morons so that we could maybe like sell some of the babies because it is a much more desired and harder to come by chicken, especially in our area. And they are just taking their sweet time to lay any eggs. They were hatched out March 1st. And so we're at about six months now. Anyways, still not a single copper moron egg. And so we are really anxious and cannot wait for that because as of right now, they are just freeloading. <laughs> and um, anyways, but besides that, chickens are good. Our copper moron roosters though, they are starting to breed with the other females. So we're hoping that our female copper morons will start laying here soon since they're obviously nice and mature. They're doing their job. So I would actually say too, I would say that our eggs should be pretty much all fertile now, which that was our situation this summer that we had no fertile eggs. So we kept having broody hens and in years past, we would just let the hens sit on the eggs. Um, our roosters were all copper morons because we want to be able to actually know that when a copper moron hen lays their egg, it's going to actually be genetically a copper moron. There's no other roosters to um, breed with. So anyways, that's nice to know that we don't have to switch out yeah we actually we have five copper moron roosters and we're hoping that's enough for all of them when they do start laying <laughs> uh so then this is our chickens back fenced in area when you make your way here alex has a section of our house that's fenced off we call these my kitchen garden beds i have four four by eight feet um, garden beds and I did do a video where I planted them up for the fall and everything is doing really well let me go ahead and show you here is the green beans we planted and oh my goodness it is just incredible to see what some good soil and nice sunlight will do I have no doubt that in the next coming weeks they'll start producing a lot of food for us that we can go ahead and can and freeze and have over the winter we also do have um, our parsley and cilantro herbs growing on the side. Uh, the only thing that I will say is that we did have some chickens get into this back fenced in area. I don't know if one of the kids let them in or what. So my cilantro and parsley and a lot of my seeds are like all mixed up. So it's not nice straight rows. You'll see that as we get down to the broccoli and well, I didn't plant broccoli. As we get down to the kale and spinach area it's very much a like scrambled mess now this next bed i still have my tomato plants in and you guys these are insane i'm gonna give the camera over to alex so you can just truly get a feel for how massive these plants are <laughs> and still producing a lot as you can see it's like a 10 foot tall tomato plant it's insane so believe it or not, I'm actually hacking at these plants every single week. I actually just went through, I just went through yesterday and just chopped off all the suckers that were growing at the base because I've planted carrots here on either side and I'm worried that they're not going to get any sunlight <laughs> from these monsters, but I can't pull them out yet because they are producing so well for me. Like, look at all of these tomatoes just growing so well. I have cherry and Roma varieties. And I know Alex might not be happy, but this is the first time, <laughs> this is the first time that we've tried out this string trellising um, system for tomatoes and I love it. 
and I even think I'm gonna try it out next season for cucumbers. I recently learned that you can uh, train cucumbers to climb up the single string trellising systems. Uh, Alex just put a lot of time into and resources into getting us cattle panels to grow our other tomatoes, but we'll see. Um, I may have to find another use for those cattle panels, or at least some, because I'd love to have some more of these trellising systems. Alex is glaring at me right now. He's not happy about that. Um, but yeah, then the carrots that are growing this on either side, I have a yellow variety on the other side of the tomatoes that you can't see right now. And then I have just a normal, uh, a good producing orange carrot. I cannot remember the name of it. So it is about time for me to come through and thin out these carrots. So this is the orange variety. I just probably need to cut this tomato plant again to give them light. This one is the yellow variety and it's doing so good. And what's fun is I had this massive calendula plant. I cut it all the way back and it started producing more, but also you can see that it's self seeded and I have all of these calendula plants all over the place that are starting to sprout. All right, so I'm gonna make my way to the other side of our little patio where we have the two other beds. These don't get as much sunlight um, and the chickens did get into it. So that's not, it doesn't look as impressive, but with fall means that the leaves will start falling off the trees and this will start getting a lot more sunlight. And hopefully we fixed the chicken problem, <laughs> but I'll go ahead and show you what the beds look like. It's not beautiful, but it is going to definitely uh, be productive and that's all that really matters all right so the kids put just two more green bean plants i was uh freezing some of our green beans and they took a seed and they just wanted to see if it would grow and it was a nice little learning experience so those are just two random green beans and then you'll see it's just like a mess i went ahead and reseeded this is my lettuce i have some spinach coming up my kale is looking great Again, I need to come here and thin them out soon. Over here, I have more kale as well. And then my radishes. All right, so now we are on our way to head to the pigs. So really the only thing that's changed with our pigs is that they're just growing and growing. Uh, we are scheduled to butcher them out on middle of November, I believe November 17th. So we have just uh, about two more months with the pigs and the only thing that's actually pretty heartbreaking about these pigs is that we have two silky, they're like teenage baby hens and they love these pigs. They spend their entire days with the pigs and they have ever since they were little babies. You can catch them taking naps on top of them. They're always close by. So the silkies, chicks, and pigs are still best friends. Ain't that right? They're your little besties. It's a little upsetting this year to know that these pigs will only be with us another two months and hopefully these silky chicks will take it well. But um, I think that's it though. Thank you so much for spending time with us and going on this fun little farm tour. I hope to see you next time. All right, thanks, bye. All right, it is mid-September. <laughs> it's mid <laughs> All right. <laughs> I guess it's just stopped.